Hello, my name is Kelly Anton, PLC Training Instructor with PECC. In this lesson, I am going to cover configuring the S7-1200 PLC. When the TIA portal software is started, you are presented with what is called the portal view. This is a task-based getting started view where you can open an existing project, create a new project, migrate projects from the previous generation of software. There's also a welcome tour that requires an internet connection that you can get uh, getting started videos from, from the Siemens Service and Support website. I am going to select the installed software link. This will give me a listing of all of the TI portal software packages that are installed for this version. You also have the ability to check for updates for the software that is installed. Next, I will select the help link. The help is a dynamic help system for all of the TI portal software packages that are installed for this version. Next, I'd like to give you a few helpful tips while using the help system. First, in the content area, you can go down to what's new in TIA Portal, and then you can find out the new features in the various versions of TIA Portal that have been released. Next, you have the ability to go down and select Programming a PLC. This section provides comprehensive help on various topics for programming the PLC. The Programming Recommendations section provides a nice overview of some of the new features and benefits of using the next generation PLCs. I will mark this help topic as a favorite so that I can quickly refer back to it in the future. This will show up in the Favorites tab of the Help section. There are advanced search capabilities within the Help system to help you easily locate help topics. So I can type in search phrases. So for example, I will type in system data type and it will find all topics that include all of those words. So you can see that there are a thousand results that have been returned. To limit your results to an exact phrase, you can put quotation marks around your search phrase. So in this case, I'll put quotation marks around, hit the search button, my updated results now are down to 165. Next, I can also filter by the device, so I could select the S7-1200 and that will take that down to 90 results. I will open the first search result in a tab. You do also have the ability to open up a new tab so I will select a new help tab, and then I will select my favorites tab and open up the previously created favorite. Selecting the synchronize button will show you exactly where this help topic shows up in the overall help system, so that makes it easy to find related help topics. Now I will close the help system, and then we are going to create a new project by selecting create new project. We'll give our project a name, and it's going to be S7-1200, and then I will select the create button. This will create the project in the automation folder by default, give the project name an extension that AP16, which is the major version of TIA Portal. So that's helpful to determine the version of Portal that was used to create the project. Once the project is open successfully, we move on to the first steps. This is where we can configure a device within our project. We can write the PLC program, we can configure drives, or we can configure HMI screens. You can always switch from the portal view to the project view in the lower left hand corner or back. I'm going to stay in the portal view and configure a device. I will select add new device and then select the controllers category. Then I will expand out all the S7-1200 CPUs and you can pick you know, the different category of CPU that you would like. I'm going to pick a 1215 CPU and then select a specific part number. Here I can select the version of the firmware. but what I'm going to do is actually do an unspecified CPU. I can use an unspecified CPU when my PLC is already wired up and I have power to it so I can detect the hardware configuration automatically. So I'll add the unspecified CPU into my project. You will see that the CPU comes in as a wireframe. So it's not a picture of an actual CPU yet. So we could, in the catalog, actually select a specific you know, part number CPU that we'd want to use. But what I'm going to do is select the Detect feature. When I select the Detect feature, this is going to bring up a dialog box for hardware detection. So I have to select my Profinet Industrial Ethernet interface and do a Start Search. Once a compatible CPU is found, it will show up in the list. Right now, the PLC does not have an IP address found, so we can only see the MAC address of it. The MAC address can be found by lifting up the cover on the CPU and then locating it right above the Ethernet ports. You can also flash the LEDs of the CPU to identify a particular CPU to make sure that you are detecting the proper CPU. Next, I will press Detect to start the detection process. Now I am prompted if I want to save my PGPC interface settings. So you have a choice to say yes or no. I will say no at this point. 
The hardware configuration will be read out of the PLC, so all of the part numbers that are included in your actual hardware configuration will be brought in in our default parameterization. Next, I will show you the signal board area. So I'm going to select a digital input signal board that has four digital inputs. I'll select the part number, and you can see the location of where it would show up in the hardware configuration. So I'll just drag that over and drop that in. Next, I will change the zoom level of my CPU so that you can see the digital inputs actually on the CPU. I'll use the pan feature to zoom over and then you can see the four digital inputs. So I added four digital input points without expanding the footprint of the CPU. Next what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo that signal board that I added in because I don't actually have that in my hardware configuration that I'm using. Next I will change my zoom level so that I can see my entire PLC configuration. I'm going to minimize the signal board area. I could pick you know, DI, DQ modules, but I'm going to pick a combo module. That's a DI, DQ module. When I select that, you can see that those modules, or I.O. modules, would show up to the right of the CPU. I don't actually have one of those in my physical configuration, so I will undo that. Next, I'm going to go down to the communication modules area. So I've got a variety of different communication modules available. So I'll expand out Profibus, and I will select the Profibus module. So a Profibus module here, or any communication module that I select, would show up to the left of the CPU. I can get more detailed information about that module. So I will drag that module in, and then you can see that module shows up to the left of the CPU. I will undo the communication module because, again, I don't have one of those in my physical configuration. Next, I'm going to select my CPU, and I'm going to look at the general properties of the CPU. First, I can name my CPU. I can give it a meaningful name, so I will change the name of my CPU to be PLC PCC. You can see that the name of the PLC shows up in the actual hardware configuration. Next, I'm going to select the Ethernet port on the CPU, and then select the Ethernet address area. This is where you can add in a subnet if you're going to do Profinet, configure the IP address of the PLC, etc. Next, I'm going to go to the catalog information underneath the general area. Here you can see the short designation of the CPU, the article number for ordering, and the actual firm firmware number of the CPU that is going to be used. Next, I'm going to go and minimize the general area and look at the digital input area. I'm going to expand out the digital input area for the onboard I.O. on the PLC. Now I'm going to select the I.O. addresses area. This is where you can set the starting address for your input addresses and your output addresses. There are 14 digital input addresses, so it's going to take up two bytes to accommodate all 14 digital inputs on the onboard I.O. Now I will look at the configuration of the actual digital input channel. So I can select a digital input channel and go through the various configuration for that channel. Next, I'm going to look at the analog input area and expand that out and go down to the I.O. addresses area. Here you can set the starting address for the analog inputs and the starting address for the analog outputs. Each analog address would take up two bytes. I'm going to minimize the analog input area. You can configure your high-speed counters, pulse generators, but I'm going to go over to the startup area. This is where you configure the startup operation of the CPU after a power on. What mode will the PLC start up in? Next, I will select the cycle area. This is where you can set the maximum scan cycle for the PLC. So if this number would exceed the maximum number, it would generate an error. The communication load is where you can allocate more time to handle communications, or you can allocate more time to solve logic. So I'll increase that number to 40. Next, I will select the system and clock memory area. I can enable one byte for the system memory bits that have predefined tasks. I can also enable the clock memory bits as well. Each bit in the clock byte cycles at a different frequency on and off. The PLC also has a built-in web server that can be enabled. We also can configure the time of day so we can set our regional time zone. So I'm in the central time zone, so I will pick that. Under protection and security, you can set the access level of the PLC. This is where you can password protect access to the PLC. Under connection mechanisms, if you want to enable like third-party communications to a you know, OPC server as an example, you'd want to enable this permit put and get interface. In the overview of addresses area, you will see your I.O. And then for each section of memory, there'll be a starting byte address and an ending byte address. So that's your address from and your address to area that is being occupied in the PLC. Next, I'm going to highlight the PLC in the project tree and select Download to Device. This will start compiling my program. 
So it's going to go through and compile the program. Then you can select load. Then you're going to want to select the no action and choose start module to put the PLC in run mode after downloading. So now this hardware configuration is now downloaded into the PLC. So I'm going to open up the online and diagnostics. And then I'm going to go online with the PLC. When I go online with the PLC, you will see that the, everything is green and the PLC is in run mode at this point. I'm going to select go offline, save my project, and this concludes the lesson on configuring the PLC.